want to go to the very basics. I want to talk about logging and monitoring using CloudWatch. So I want to start from the very start, asking the question, what is CloudWatch? CloudWatch is the monitoring service from AWS. It helps you to keep your logs, track some metrics, trigger some alarms. It can also record all the different changes in your infrastructure so you can do things with it, like trigger lambdas if you have too many instances running or things like that. It does all kind of very interesting things. So it's more than just a login tool. So CloudWatch help you to bring the visibility from your infrastructure into one place that I think that's one of the biggest challenges in AWS to see what is going on in all these different services. And CloudWatch is that place where you can connect everything together. We have been using CloudWatch to check the logs from Lambdas, but you can also do other things with it, like check different metrics in your Dynamo or even check the logs from the API Gateway if you enable all, all resources will push some kind of information to, to CloudWatch. But specifically for Lambda, CloudWatch is a great thing because when you have these execution times that is very limited and ephemeral and you want to respond as fast as possible, you want that your login is not consuming thing, kind of your execution time. And when you're working with Lambda and CloudWatch, Lambda will be kind of streaming asynchronously the logs to CloudWatch and it doesn't consume any extra execution time in your function and it doesn't generate any performance issue as with other libraries, external libraries from AWS that might generate some problems. So that's why usually it's a good practice to use your CloudWatch for logging in Lambda and then maybe use some external library to see these logs or filter these logs or something like that. But, but keep the CloudWatch as the login place for your Lambda. So now I want to show you basics of CloudWatch. Let's go to try out the metrics, the login and the dashboards, and let's go to the console to get that done. Let's start by creating a new empty project. This is going to be a very, very, very simple project. So just follow the steps as always to create a simple project with AWS Node.js as the template. We are going to get into Atom and do some small modifications. The code is available in GitHub, but this is very simple code. So I just remove all these comments to make it simpler to read. And then I will create a trigger for the hello function so we can trigger this easily. What we are going to do here after we create a trigger is to do a console log because that's what we want to try. I will just change the message to something. And this console log will just write hello in the console. Hello was called. So very simple message. So we will deploy now and we will see what happens. So I will speed up the deployment. And when we finish deployment, I will just trigger this function with that URL. I just trigger it from Postman. So, and we can see the message. So now we can go to Lambda in our account in AWS in the console. And then if you go there and you look for the function that you just deploy, the CloudWatch step hello, you can go to monitoring. And there you can see the different metrics for this function. And to see the logs, you can just go to logs. This is one way to find the logs and there you can see the logs for this call and you can see hello was called. Another way is a little bit more straightforward, but in a way not that easy sometimes to find is to go directly to CloudWatch and then go to log and there look for the logs in the list of lambdas. If you have few lambdas, then it becomes very easy. If you have a lot like me, this becomes very painful. So when you find your, your lambda, and you can get into the log group and then you can see exactly the same. Another way to do that, to see the logs, my favorite I will say is to see the logs from the serverless framework in your terminal. So you just type SLS logs minus F, the name of the function and minus T to tail the logs. So this, if you keep on calling, it will keep on appearing. If you don't put the minus T, it will just print whatever is there. Another thing you can do with CloudWatch, as I said, is to create dashboards with metrics. So I will just create a new dashboard. 
I'll put the name testing cloud watch. You can put any name you want. And there you have an empty dashboard and there you can add widgets. So these dashboards you can display in a screen or you can have them open to see how your service is performing. And when you add a new metric, you can look for the different services. So we will just look for Lambda and then you can look by function name. And there is all the functions there. Then I will just look for the serverless cloud watch and you can search so it becomes easier. If you put the name of the function, it just shows that it filters out the rest. And then if you see on the right, you will start seeing some dots appearing. Those are like the only time we invoke this function. So there's only one, but if this is called many times, then you will see lines. So you can define things like the order in which these metrics are shown. You can also define the period that these uh, metrics are showing. So either one second of information or five minutes or one hour. And depending on that, you're going to see different things. The period and the statistics will make you see different things. So it's important that you tune your dashboard to something that you understand. So if I put 30 seconds, the average, it will be the average in 30 seconds, but I want the sum in 30 seconds. So it's a different value than the average. This case is the same because I only call it once, but if you have multiple. For some metrics, the average is good. For others, the sum is better. And then you have some graph options. You can put annotations. You can define what kind of data you, how you want to show the data. And that's kind of the graph. Then you can add numbers as graphs. That's something I like. Some things are easy to see as, as a number. So let's just look again for the, for the same function. And then you can see if I change the period, then the average just disappears. <laughs> There's not enough data. So now we have it one minute. And we don't have any data there. So in order to get some data, what I will do is I will trigger this function many times. So we can see in one minute, I don't know how many invocations we'll have. This takes a while. Usually CloudWatch is almost real time. So you need sometimes to wait a little bit. Now, if I refresh this graph, you can see that there is some values and we can see that there is some invocation. And also you can see now that we have called this couple of times. So if I change the period and I change the statistic, you start seeing things differently. So if I have the amount of, I don't know, invocations in one minute, there were four in one hour, there's an eight. So it's different, different values. So you can play a little bit with that. But always be careful on what is your period and what is your metric. But sometimes those numbers can be deceiving if you don't know what you're putting there. So another thing you can do is you can change the period that you are showing the data. So even if the metric is being displayed for every 30 seconds, you can also show what is happening in the last hour, in the last three hours, in the last day, or then you can show what happened in the last minute or in the last 15 minutes and things like that. Remember that you need some data. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up.